Hello everyone, my name is Mandi. I am the founder of GMAT Mantra. So in this uh, video, I'll talk about one of the questions uh, most of the students ask when they've already prepared for GMAT and either they're giving mocks or uh, they've already appeared for GMAT and in the mocks or in the actual GMAT, they scored around 660 and they're targeting somewhere around 750. So in this video, I'll discuss what are the strategies and what are the action plans that a student can follow at the level of 660 where their font code is around 47, 48 and verbal is around 31, 32, 33. So what exactly they can do to reach 700 or 750 plus. So now first let me uh, take you to a background of the student. So if I'm looking at a student who is getting around 660. So as for me, uh, the knowledge of the person in the or the knowledge about the basic concepts is fine. So quant 48 means the person's knowledge about the quant concepts is fine about almost all the topics. There could be a uh, lag here and there, but in majority of the topics, the knowledge would be perfect. Similarly goes for verbal. So if you're getting around 31, 32, 33, that means your understanding of basic concepts of verbal is good. Now, what are the main uh, problems that a student face when he's getting around 660 and uh, with this breakup? See, one of the reasons uh, a student is getting this kind of score is one is inconsistent approach. So for example, if I look at uh, sentence correction, there are two ways in which we can solve questions or three ways in which we can solve question. One is that the student can read the meaning of the sentence and then slowly reads every option and then find out the right answer. Second is directly uh, going to for elimination process. So rather than understanding the meaning, the student can follow the grammar or the elimination process to find the answer. Now there is no right and wrong way. You can follow either. But what happens, a student use a mixture of both. So for some questions, the student is using uh, meaning or some the student is using elimination. So if that happens, uh, you would see that uh, the amount of time that student takes is always more than the required because there is no consistency what happens a student follow one approach to solve the question but he gets stuck so he goes through the second approach to solve the question same thing happens for quant you would have seen that once the question starts or the difficulty level starts going up so uh, a student starts solving the question let's say there are two, again two three ways so let's say the student starts with the substitution where you plug in the values in case of quant. So there are variables in the quotient, so we plug in the values. So he starts by plugging in the values, but he gets stuck after some time. And then he again goes to this uh, reading the quotient and then starts solving it again. So here the main problem is the wrong approach because it is possible that substitution is not the right way using some formula or some equation is the right way or let's it could be a problem solving question so in problem solving question you can use options to find the answer so that could have been the right way to solve it so maximum cases you would see the wrong approach is the culprit so that is one reason that you don't have a consistent approach to solve questions either in quant or verbal Second is, uh, you don't have a basic understanding how actually an aptitude test works. So I've seen that, uh, let's say I'm just talking about let's say verbal section. So in verbal section, uh, students have this, uh, let's say somebody wants to get into this, uh, want to score 40, 40 plus. So they think that they need to get all the questions right. I mean, out of 36 questions, they need to get all 36 questions right to get to 40. If you get 36 out of 36, probably you will get 51. That's the highest possible. You don't need 51, you need 40. So for that, you don't need to get all the questions right. So what happens in that rush to attempt all the questions, 
most of the students um, get uh, or commit silly mistakes because if you have prepared well you have practiced well so there is no reason to get the question wrong so the one of the major reason is silly mistakes so you can understand if you don't invest the required time in the question you're bound to make small silly mistakes so if you're rushing and you want to attempt all the questions because you think that you need to get all the questions right to get to 750 level that's a wrong assumption so we need to focus on right understanding so i'll discuss about it so first reason is inconsistent approach second reason is this wrong thinking and uh, sometimes it's the anxiety level so everything goes hand in hand so when i say anxiety level see um, when you are doing your mocks and when you're writing your actual gmat your mind actually knows it i mean your mind knows this over here stakes are pretty high so when st uh, stakes are pretty high so, you know it, your mind becomes really anxious and it doesn't let you focus so that could be one of the reasons that you're not able to focus because anxiety levels are too high and that is another major cause for getting uh, a low score even you you have prepared well now now what mistakes students do let's say you're given gmat and you have got 660 what they do uh, they go and join some coaching institute see you need to understand that coaching institutes they just teach you the basic concepts and uh, right approach they don't work on your anxiety side so don't join any coaching institute no coaching institute helps you out with that they don't even have that much time over here you need uh, evaluation you need self-awareness because you have to work on your psychology and you cannot uh, improve your psychology until unless you evaluate yourself you need to have a self-awareness so there are two ways that you can follow one you can do it yourself second you can hire a trainer remember 99.99 percent .99 trainers don't help you in psychology only few trainers are there who work on the psychology side of the exam so uh, how to evaluate see for evaluation record your practice sessions or record your mock tests so let's say you're giving any mock test so uh, what I recommend to my students and this is how I normally train because I know that in everything 80% is psychology 20% is only the knowledge so what I do uh, when my students start giving a mock test I ask them to download a screen recording software so there are many screen recording software for example I use GoToMeeting to record screen uh, you can use Amazon Chime where you can record screen and there are many more which you can find online which are freely available so download one of the screen recording softwares and record your mock tests okay so when you record your mock test and make sure you wear the headset so you speak while you're attempting the mock okay so whatever you speak gets recorded whatever you're doing everything gets recorded okay now once that recording is done sit with that recording okay and then look at every question now analyze your question on few aspects one uh, are you following a consistent approach okay secondly uh, there could be some lag in this in your knowledge how to find which areas are weak so let's say you're doing a sentence correction question and you saw a ten question on tenses so you saw had but you ignored it you are not able to handle it and you just move to something else that means had is your problem you know actually how had is used but you don't know how to apply it because i've seen mostly you know the concepts but you don't know how to apply it so there is a problem in application so one analyze yourself on the consistent approach are you using the consistent approach secondly uh, are you able, able to apply all the concepts third ask yourself are you rushing because if you are rushing you would see that you are creating a lot of silly mistakes now how you can uh, avoid silly mistakes to get a right understanding now what is right understanding right understanding is that see let's say you're targeting 13 and 14 verbal okay 
So uh, what normally as I've seen students is they try to attempt all 36 questions. So they get around four or five questions right and then they got three four questions wrong in a, uh, in a row. And again that they get two three questions right and then one two questions wrong. So at consistent intervals student is creating errors. So what happens when your graph goes up then it goes down then it goes up goes down. So it never goes upwards to a limit where you can get a score. So you just your score fluctuates. So you end up getting around 27, 28, 29. So out of normally I've seen out of 36, you're getting around 22, 23 questions right, and you end up getting around 27, 28, 29, 30. Other way of looking at it is uh, don't try to attempt all the th 36 questions. Focus on only 30 questions. Okay. I know you need to attempt all the questions. So in last two minutes, simply mark anything for the remaining question and complete the section. So focus on 30 questions. So can I say if you focus on 30 questions, now the amount of time you have per question increases. Okay. In that, try to get 90% accuracy. Always remember accuracy is directly proportional to time invested. So uh, just focus on 30 questions and try to get around 26, 27 questions right. You would see that you are getting 39, 40 easily. So don't try to complete or attempt all the questions. Attempting means you can mark something for the remaining questions. But try to just focus on 30 questions and try to get maximum accuracy. Now everybody doesn't have the level of 40 and some people have more than 40. So as per the capacity, just focus on 100% accuracy. Don't give yourself the targets that, okay, I have to attempt 30. Because sometimes you don't, you can't attempt 30 and sometimes you can attempt all 36. So don't give yourself such targets, try to maximize it and always focus on 100% accuracy. Don't get into that panic mode that I have to attempt all the questions and I have to get all of them right. Don't give yourself this kind of targets. They're unrealistic and they're not the right way to look at the exam. So if you just focus on this way of evaluation, you would see that with each uh, test and with each evaluation, you're able to get to uh, this state where you're following the right approach. Now this is a very big question mark on what is the right approach probably if you're doing your self analysis you cannot find the right approach for that you have to hire a private tutor because a private tutor can only look at your recording and see how you are solving the question this is what we do at GMAT Mantra and I'm proud to say that we are the only company in this world that follow this methodology of teaching because when I started my career and I was preparing for my MBA exams I faced the same problem. There was nobody to evaluate me. Everybody was teaching, 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 but nobody told me actually how the exam works. Where is my problem lies? Nobody ever sat with me and looked at my recordings. So because I faced this problem, that's why I'd make sure that at GMAT Mantra, we have one-to-one -one coaching. We don't get into group coaching. And we make sure that we record every practice session because every practice session needs to be recorded. No point wasting one year than reading the concepts and practicing if you're not evaluating. Because I've seen people investing three years, four years in the GMAT preparation, they never evaluate themselves. They just practice question, go to the next test, practice question for the questions in the practice, whatever question that they are getting wrong, they look at the solution and they move on. Nobody works on the psychology, what is the exact reason behind this. So this is what we do at GMAT Mantra. So, for you, uh, if you're doing it yourself, you don't want to hire a private tutor, make sure you record your practice sessions, evaluate them. Probably I invest around four to five hours on each mock test. It's a two hour test, but it takes me around four to five hours to evaluate each. So make sure you invest more time in evaluation. Don't run after doing, oh, I have, I'll do 20 tests or 20 mock tests. No, probably five are sufficient. But make sure each test is evaluated so if you're doing the right evaluation, you will automatically see that you're improving. You can improve through self-awareness. So in case you are at 660 or maybe 630, 640, because everybody who is in this range of 600 to 650, or maybe in 680, 690, and you're targeting 750 plus, the only problem you have is inconsistent approach. And you don't have the right understanding to give the test. So focus on getting the right accuracy, uh, right approach and have the right understanding to focus on 100% accuracy. Don't run after attempting all the questions and getting them right. So if you just follow this much with the same knowledge, you would see tremendous improvement in your G 
GMAT score. Thank you.